You went to prison for years. So don't bring up my if fucking you were past. You crackhead for a decade. At least I only went to prison for a year. Time to clock in. Alright, so you missed this. <laughs> so you can't have him anymore. <laughs> wow. Your breath is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Mike sucks ass. So it's amazing to watch him. Alright, welcome back to the night shift, ladies and gentlemen. You're working late, and so are we. It's time to clock in. I mean. I'm surprised. This day cannot start like this. All right, so obviously, as you guys know, we still talk to Amara. You haven't seen her lately on the channel. She's kind of been off the grid. She's pregnant. She doesn't have a lot of friends in LA, so we like to keep an eye on her. So last week, I get a phone call from her. Hey, Mike, what's up? Uh, I just bought a new house in Chicago. Next week, I'm going to move my pregnant self, the three ducks, and the two dogs on a five-day driving adventure across the United States. And I'm going to do it all alone. So I was like, all right, well, I'll drive you. If you want me and David to just take the ride with you, we'll go across the country. And I was like, fuck it. We could shoot some content as well. It'd be hilarious. And and then I thought about it and I was like, I'm gonna be cooped up with David, the German videographer, three ducks, two dogs, and my ex-girlfriend for five days. Absolutely fucking not. All right, so really quickly, I don't know where Amber is, but that dog is coming on the fucking jet with us. He looks blind, man. He ain't blind, he's beautiful. Do you wanna lay the rules out to him really quick of what he can shoot and what he can't shoot? Make me look scary. Seriously, here yeah, on, right here. from here on. <laughs> well, at some point you have to show him what, the, what your belly looks like. I just don't want any unexpected shots, like me from the side, me walking, me looking like a whale. Why are you going to Chicago, by the way? I wanted to get away from you. No, can you be honest for a second? Why are you going there? Because I'm having a baby. And my family lives there. Am I going to be at Uncle Dave? That's <laughs> the creepiest name ever, <laughs> Uncle Dave. <laughs> Uncle Dave is always <laughs> Yo, if you have an Uncle Dave, watch out. And now a word from our sponsors. All right, as you guys probably know by now, you always see me rocking the same pairs of kicks. I wore these in Iceland a couple weeks ago, stepped in a big muddy puddle, and completely trashed them. And as they say in that one show, winter is coming, and so you kind of need a shoe that will keep your feet dry. It ain't them. Well, luckily today's episode is sponsored by Vessi. They keep your feet completely dry at the local ski hill, but do just as good as an everyday sneaker. So not only are they super comfortable, and I really mean that as a guy with pre-existing injuries, I would tell you if they weren't comfortable, and they are. But the most important part of all is they're not water resistant, they're waterproof. Like completely waterproof. Like my foot is in this freaking pool right now. All right, David, feel my sock. Is it dry? Dry, but sweaty. My feet are always sweaty. Vessi makes their shoes with their own Dymatex material, which is cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Also, they're sustainably made with less material waste and less water waste, plus they're completely vegan, in case you wanna eat them. But well, you can keep your feet dry this winter with Vessi shoes. Go to the link in the description below and use code MALAK, that's M-A-J-L-A-K, for $25 off your first purchase, and let's get back to the night shift, baby. Just so you guys know, this is the duck that we rescued from homelessness a couple of months ago on the vlog. Look at him right there. He's a little bit clumsy. He also has two friends now. So that's Aflac, and those are just his friends. They don't have names. Aflac and friends? Yes. <laughs> what did you just say? You're getting what removed? The Arabic tattoo? That one, yes. And the John tattoo? Yes, and the hearts, and so the dragon. Moms don't have tattoos. You are not getting the fucking hearts removed. That's like Michael Jordan saying, nah, I don't fuck with the number 23. No one's gonna see my butt anymore, so how are they gonna know? What about the baby daddy? You? <laughs> it's not me. It's not me. Oh, me they... and Mike chose to use a sperm donor because his armpit hair is in the wrong place and he has fat, <laughs> flat feet. No, I just wish you weren't crazy, dude. Dude, you're way crazier than me. You were on some I'm gonna sink both of our ships type shit. Who is in no drama ever, stays to themselves, never gets in trouble? Me. I'm yes. never in drama. You can look at his whole life and see that he's the crazy one and that he's clearly gaslighting you guys and me. You've been watching too much TikTok videos. You didn't even know what the term gaslighting meant a year ago. And by the way, you went to prison for years. So don't bring up my and fucking you were past. you a crackhead for a decade, at least I only went to prison for a year. I asked him if this was the weirdest thing he's ever seen. And what did you say? Oh, I've been doing this for 15 years. I've seen some weird stuff. But what I told you is about 10 years ago, we had a guy show up for a plane, a Lear 35, which is like a fifth the size of this, with a horse. With a fucking horse! <laughs> Dude, I can't believe we made it. I mean, we didn't make it, but we just took off. We got a fucking petting zoo on a private jet. It's not a proper trip on a PJ without a charcuterie board. It's almost like we're in Paris. Yo, what do you think about the size of these grapes? I'm not doing it. I'm a mom now. It's so small. <laughs> <laughs> we made it to Chicago, just landed at Midway. Are you surprised that we made so it? That we made it? Yeah, yeah, with the turbulence on that plane. What's your like, deal? I'm like talking in front of people. Oh, she's like, oh, show them the people watching. 
There are, there's like 15, there's like 15 people. I'm used to it now. <laughs> Do they always stand that close to each other? And what is it again, Affleck and Friends? Affleck and Associates. <laughs> they don't have names. There's a whole pond. That's Show them the yard really quick too. Look at 1.3, dog. Like a little sunroom in your bedroom. Big rooms all around. This is like the great room in here. The fucking kitchen. Bro, 1.3, dude. In LA, it would get you nothing. It would get you an apartment. Look at this fucking uh, wine, wine locker, wine room. Downstairs, there's a whole art, like, gallery, like a theater space, a full gym. It's crazy this is. I just don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to stay in LA for, dude. Wait, I, are you gonna be a PTA, mom? I don't think the other moms would let me. Do you think I'll look way different in 10 years? Cause then it's a possibility. I think it's the eyes. Would you ever would you ever think of getting different eyes? Well, I'm gonna donate them when I die. So someday someone else will have them. <laughs> like some poor girl, she's like going to church with your eyes. You need to leave. All right, so here's the deal. Small Cheval. Once again, I posted on my Instagram stories that I was coming to Chicago. Everybody said the exact same place. Three options. Cheeseburgers, hamburgers, french fries. That's it. That's all they got on the menu, and I fucking love it. I'm here with Amber Maple. Veteran burger reviewer. Remember, she was here from the beginning, from the very first burger tasting, I think, on the night shift. She's back with me. You actually get two judges' scores on this one, because you can actually talk to the baby. For two, this is actually the baby's first burger that he's ever tasted. I haven't eaten a burger yet while I'm pregnant. It looks like a Shake Shack style burger. It comes double automatically. I didn't order the special. It's got the onions, the pickles, and the Dijonese. The fries very much resemble McDonald's fry. Very cheesy. Nice char grill on the burger. And I got bacon on mine as well, because why the fuck not? Three, two, <laughs> one. Uh -huh. I just wish it had more pickles. That's a good point. It's a little light on the pickles. It is a little bit salty. Does it taste salty to you? I like that. The fries taste like McDonald's, but better. What's are, this white stuff? D that's the Dijon A's. Oh. <laughs> oh, see, that's got like the perfect amount of juice in there. Are your burger reviews always as detailed now? Yeah. Really? Yeah. They used to be so much quicker. We didn't do really burger reviews. We just you went and ate. Bend my eyeball, Michael. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> We've been hitting spots that are just guaranteed bangers every single time. There's nothing really about this that like really stands out to me. The meat's not incredible. The cheese isn't incredible. It is a very, very, very good cheeseburger. I'm gonna say small Cheval, Chicago. There's like three or four locations. I'm gonna give it an 8.2. You want some of that? No wonder the night shift is going down. He's recording barbecue sauce on the ground now. The night shift's <laughs> always been a little bit of a weird channel. You may remember the last time we came down to Lake, what is this, Lake Michigan? Yes. The last time we came down to Lake Michigan for a night shift episode, it was during the height of the pandemic, so there were no people here. Well now, it's completely bustling. Chicago's come back alive with the sound of music and beer flowing. The giant Ferris wheel right there is open and moving at a feverish pitch. I don't think it's actually open or moving. It's been still the entire time that we've been here. No, that's not true. She's there lying. was a line. It was moving. There was a line for it. Yeah, trust me, I know about lines. I was down to go on the carousel. She just, <laughs> she just kept going with it. I love Chicago. I love this fucking city. I love Lake Michigan. And more than anything, I love that fucking seagull for some reason. You ever been on YouTube before? Bro, well, what's up, bro? Dude, let me I'm tell you something fan. real quick. I'm a fan of you. Yeah, I'm a fan of you. Bro, bro. I heard about you. You have oh, a can fucking- Can I get a hug? You're the most stylish person Thank I've ever you. met in my entire life. Oh, can I get a incredible. hug? A hug? Yeah, I don't know, man. I love you, man. Well, not love, Why'd but you like, fucking do it, man? You're like, I'm a big fan. You Give me a fucking hug. <laughs> If you're watching this episode of The Night Shift and you see me in person, make sure to give me a big ol' hug. Ah! Yo, I've seen this on so many fucking, on so many shits, but, oh no. Oh no. I have a back. There we go. So we're at Lyrical Lemonade headquarters in Chicago. Cole was gonna come out and, so, and with Summer, cause Summer's out here too. I guess Cole's doing some shit, but I wanted to see Jake anyways. Oh, actually I brought something for you. you You've know been trying to get it. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm a hand it to you right now, but then I do have to sign it. Yeah, I need I to sign it. You know, I look up to you a lot, and this is, this is amazing what you do for the people, and just this whole, this whole thing is very special. I so I'm very thankful for it. I'm excited for you too, bro. I'm excited for you, bro. But yeah, bro. A jacket that Kanye was supposed to wear. Of course, we designed a jacket for the GOAT designer. He looked at it, he was like, uh, I'll just do what I'm wearing. But that's a pizza box from Mac Miller made in Tokyo. Me and Cole, like, that was our definitely big bond when we were young. Young white dude doing his thing, was just all happy, all joy, so that shit means a lot. I know Cole was like big, big into Mac, and they actually became close friends, so that was like the one thing they got to do together. Big dog juice from Nuketown, that was the outfit he wore. Yeah. 
I just landed at Midway too, bro. It was kind of like surreal. Different, dude. bro. I, nah. I I usually never fly out of there, but honestly, that's why this book means a lot, bro. For real, because you know, God, I had to watch that shit take my best friend. Not only that, like the best artist I ever got to see. So you know, I know that shit fucked a lot of people up, but can't complain with God's path. And, you know, I'm happy that people learned from that shit, and that's the biggest thing to see Juice change people and shit. That was. That's all you can ask for, you know, music to really... Ever now, bro. Yeah. At all times, all chances, support these guys. These are fucking real dudes. And if you don't know what Lyrical Lemonade is, I don't know if you're fucking sleeping or what, but go check them out. Yo, hit a shot. Hit a shot, please, bro. There it is. Money! It's literally been like 24 hours since we got here. We got here last night at like 7.30. It's 7.30 the next day. Last 24 hours. It's, that was quick. That was yeah. quick. We got a lot done, though. It's a quick one. Yeah, we did a lot. Do you feel good about everything? you feel yeah. set up? Mike bought me the biggest, fluffiest air mattress to sleep on tonight and made my bed for me. Until your stuff gets the here. The sweetest ex-boyfriend in the entire world. Who blew it up? Huh? Who blew it up? David, the best German videographer. <laughs> I probably am not gonna see you again until... I think you said you were gonna come back in February and I bleeped that so they don't need to hear it, but yeah, I'm not gonna see you again until you have the kid. Really? Probably, I would assume. Yesterday you said you were gonna come back sooner. Maybe we will. I do fuck but with you don't Chicago have to. a lot. It's fine. But maybe you'll come for something else and then we'll see you. Alright. It's just such a weird relationship, you know? Do I get a kiss? No, absolutely not. I'll see you soon. Maybe in February. Alright, I'll see ya. Get out of here, so. I mean, yeah, there's no debate that we have one of the weirdest relationships on YouTube or, or in the world. I don't know what to say to you guys. The one thing I will say is one, we're standing under a bronchiosaurus right now. Bronchiosaurus also has a mask on. Can you zoom in on that? Can I see that? Yeah. Fucking weird, but you gotta stay safe out here during the pandemic. He has his mask on, I don't have my mask on, but I'll put it back on after this clip. Um, weird ass relationship. It's just such a sad idea that when a romantic relationship ends and doesn't end in marriage or whatever, that you can't still have a relationship or have a friendship with that person. A lot of what? people would disagree with you. What? No, I'm not saying that. I know you disagree with me, but no, I'm just saying the idea, oh, are you gonna talk about the guy that she's now meeting? Like, Yo, I'm fanning this guy and like what? I'm having kids. No, like she knows, way. dude, listen, she knows the deal with me. She knows I'm gonna go back to LA and go right back to what I was doing. But what I'm trying to say to you is this. If you can still be friends with someone that you at one point cared about, unless it dramatically deteriorates or pulls away from your life, the idea of being friends with someone that you once had a romantic relationship with might be okay. And um, especially in situations where those people don't have like a lot of friends, don't have anyone to rely on, it might be in situations where their lives are, you know, uncertain or weird. And so, I don't know, take, what, take from this episode whatever you think you want to. Um, obviously a, a bit of a strange one. Going back to LA after 24 hours and right back to the normal episodes of the night shift. That's it for this specific episode. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing Amra uh, and going back to Chicago, a city that I really do love very much, uh, but we are fucking out of here. Thank you so much for working late with us. We're clocking out. Peace. <laughs>